Thank you for joining us for our Gospel Reflection from the Book of Common Prayer Lectionary. My name is Father Tom Papazoglakis, and I serve as rector at St. George's Episcopal Church in Clifton Park, New York. Today is the 14th Thursday after Pentecost. Let us pray. Grant, O merciful God, that your church, being gathered together in unity by your Holy Spirit, may show forth your power among all peoples to the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our lesson comes from the Gospel of Mark, the 14th chapter, beginning at the 12th verse. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, the disciples of Jesus said to him, Where do you want us to go and make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him, and wherever he enters, say to the owner of the house, The teacher asks, Where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. So the disciples set out and went to the city and found everything as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he came with the twelve. And when they had taken their places and were eating, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to him one after another, Surely not I. He said to them, It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread into the bowl with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him. But woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. While they were eating, he took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take, this is my body. And then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Here ends the lesson. Jesus and his disciples have been in Bethany. Jesus now sends two of his disciples into Jerusalem to make arrangements for the Passover meal since the Passover meal had to be eaten in the city. Because of this requirement, Jerusalem was often packed with people. Jesus gave the two disciples specific instructions, much like we heard three chapters earlier in Mark when Jesus sent two disciples to secure a donkey for his entrance into Jerusalem for what we now celebrate as Palm Sunday. Jesus told the disciples to follow the man carrying a water jar. You might ask yourself how they might know which one was the man carrying the water jar. Well, a man carrying a water jar would have been an unusual sight as carrying water jars was the work of women. The man led the disciples to the owner of the house who showed them a large upstairs room that was furnished and ready for the preparations to be made. Furnished in Jesus' day was not what we might expect today. It was primarily rugs and carpets on which the guests would gather and eat formal meals and feast. When Jesus said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me, it also indicates for us that they were in the third or fourth phases of the Passover meal, what we now know of as the precursor to Holy Communion. Jesus used this very solemn occasion to initiate the purest and holiest moment of the church's life. There's great irony in the fact that this holy meal, which celebrates the greatest of victories and joy, began with an announcement of a betrayal. The disciples were distressed and said to Jesus and to one another, Surely not I. Now while Judas was the traitor, before the night was over, all twelve of the disciples abandoned Jesus in some way if not from pride, then from fear and cowardice. Isn't that our story as well, when we act out in ways that conflict with the commandments of Jesus to love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, 
and our neighbor as ourselves? Fortunately, when we repent of our sinfulness, God, who is a God of grace and great mercy, and our Lord Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for our sins, is ready to forgive and redeem us from our sin and brokenness. So may we indeed be humble people with a contrite heart always turning to our Lord. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hardwood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. Amen. Thank you for joining us and join us every weekday for our gospel reflection. If you live in the Clifton Park area, join us for worship at 4.30 on Saturday afternoons and our Sunday morning service, which is currently at 9 o'clock a.m. On September 5th, our 9 o'clock a.m. Sunday service is moving to 9.30 a.m. and we're adding an 8 o'clock right to service with no music. If you're unable to join us in person, join us virtually through our YouTube channel. Our webpage provides recordings and details about all of our offerings.